Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to episode 2 of the drag and drop series where we're going to build out the rest of the collage image sharing application to kind of showcase the drag and drop APIs in iOS 11. Now in today's video, we are going to implement the dragging behavior inside of our application. And let me show you a quick demo as to what the dragging behavior looks like right here. So I have this simulator loaded up and this is the completed version of our application that has the drop behavior already implemented like that. And inside of these images here, I can actually drag one of them by just simply clicking like that and just moving it outside of the entire view like so. And currently our application doesn't allow us to do this. So let's take a look at what the code needs to be in order to build out this feature. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the code for our current project, which is this file right here. And you can find the download to this entire project in the previous episode, so make sure to go check that out. And this is the white screen that we get for our project. So let me go ahead and pull in the Safari browser and bring it to the right side of the device, which allows me to start dropping images inside of my application by dragging images like so. Now our current app doesn't implement any dragging behavior. So you'll notice if I try to long press these images, it doesn't exactly do very much. So the old application or the finished application rather allows you to just drag images around kind of like that. And we want to implement this behavior inside of view to load by saying first view dot add interaction. And this is the other interaction on the drag and drop API is called UI drag interaction. And we construct an instance of this with a delegate of self. Now, similar to UI drop interaction, we will also implement a protocol for our view controller, which is conveniently called UI drag interaction delegate. Okay. So let's try to build our project and you'll notice that it doesn't exactly work until you try to fix this by adding the protocol stubs, which is done by hitting the fix button. And this method is the only required protocol method from UI drag interaction delegate. So it's called items for beginning and it expects you to return an array of UI drag items. So what the heck is all this stuff? Well, let's kind of go through this step by step by first making our code run and launch inside of the simulator. So if I return just an empty bracket, which is an empty array, this will allow us to do absolutely nothing. So that's okay. And now we need to return some kind of UI drag item. So what is this UI drag item? Well, let's try to construct a drag item like so. UI drag item. And the drag item requires you to pass in some kind of item provider. All right, so what is this item provider? Well, let's see, let item provider equals NS item provider like so, because I see it's down here as NS item provider with the constructor of either contents, item or object. So because I've already done this, you actually need to uh, use the object constructor like so. And the question now is what the heck is NS item provider writing? Well, I'm going to try to get this object from the actual uh, item that I'm actually trying to drag. So for example, I'm trying to drag this image here or perhaps this image here. So the actual item that we need to uh, pass in as the provider is the image itself. So for example, this image. And the question is, how do I get access to that image based on where I'm touching the application? Well, that's pretty simple if you just realize that session again has a method on it called location which is down here and you just pass in the view that we are using as the view controllers view which is the entire white frame here and what we can do is just say let touched point equals session dot location which gives us the point at which we're touching and then the next thing you can do is to say self dot view right here and you can call this method called hit test with some kind of CG point and event. So obviously I'm going to pass in the touch point in which I'm touching and then the event is just going to be nil. Now view, uh, view .hit test. what does this do exactly? Well, it's going to return us the view that we're touching inside of our application. And it's very, very easy to use because we can just simply set our touched image view equal to that hit test, which will give me this if I'm hitting that or this if I'm 
clicking into here. So the way to kind of uh, see what's going on is to simply do this. So I'm just going to comment those two lines out. And right here, this hit test, it actually gives us a optional UI view. So let me just use an if let statement, if let that touched image view, and I'll cast it into a UI image view like so, and I will use a brace. And here I can just say, uh, let touched image equals, see touched image view dot image like that. And let me just run the application now to kind of demonstrate exactly what is touched image. So I'll put a breakpoint on line 20. So let me go ahead and drag in a couple of images into our application here and try to see if I can execute the breakpoint at perhaps line 15 and 18 and 20. So I'm gonna try to drag this image here. You'll notice that it does hit the breakpoint at line 15. And if you just hit F6, it hits the next line and F6 again, you'll notice that it goes down to returning the empty array like so. So the question is, why is it not recognizing this touched image view and going into line 18? So let me just do that again. Hit the continue. It goes immediately down to line 26. So that's right there. Break point 26. So one more time. 26. And there we go. So why is it not recognizing touched image view is because down here when we implemented the drop interaction in the last lesson, the image view that we're creating and then adding to the sub view of the view controller's view, this is the image view on line 48 and you need to set user interaction, so user interaction enabled equals to true. But uh, because we didn't do that and because this property is defaulted to false, these images are not recognized when you try to touch them in your views. So let me just try to get this view out. So long press and we get line 15, hit the continue. It actually goes down to line 18 right there. Continue one more time, it hits line 20. And so what exactly is this touched image guy? So let me just remove these breakpoints here and I'll say print touched image like so and rerun my application with one breakpoint on line 19. So let's just drag this guy in here. So this guy, how can I get this? And then that, and then this right here. So I'm going to attempt to drag this guy and the touch image, and let me just hit the eyeball, is this uh, WWDC 2016. So let's say play one more time and try to drag that that image, this touched image, is that image right there. So that's kind of how you retrieve the image that you'll use for this item provider. So let me just bring this code back to life and let me copy it and perhaps cut and paste it in here. Okay, so what do we want to do with this touch image now is just simply paste it in here and then use the item provider in here and we should be good to go with removing that statement. And we do have one problem and it's this touched image is actually an optional value. So you'll see touched image is UI image optional. You can force unwrap it with a bang operator. That does work. And then you finally need to return this drag item. So return an array of that drag item that we just created right there. And we should be okay. So I'm going to run the app one more time and show you exactly what's going to happen when I start dragging these images in my app. So I'm just going to hit that, drag that, and I can start moving this entire views frame with all of the images inside. So I'm gonna move it over here, and you'll see that it is able to drop this image into this location without too much of a problem, and that's kind of how that works. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and fix what they call the preview layer, which is what we see as we're dragging this image right here. So what we actually want to see instead is this right here. The image that we're dragging should be the preview like so. Now, this is very easy. If you just go into Xcode here and type in, let's see, drag interaction preview, and you'll get this method called preview for lifting. And this expects you to return some kind of UI targeted drag preview. And let's construct this with a view object like so. 
Now, the tricky part of this is to actually get this view object out of the image that you're dragging. So you need to actually provide it with this Apple image. And the way to do that very easily, and this is actually shown through the Apple documentation as well, is to go back up to this items for beginning method. Let me get rid of that space. And on the drag item that we are constructing, we can just simply say drag item dot local object. And you can pass any type of custom object to this property. And I'll just conveniently use the touched image view. And this object right here is whatever we're touching. For example, if I click here, it's actually this Apple icon. Okay. So with that little single trick, drag item inside of this preview method, which is this item parameter, also has access to this local object property as well. And because this constructor expects a UI view, we need to cast this down into a UI view like that. And then we try to run this again, and our preview should now be fixed. So some of you guys might be asking, why do I need an as bang instead of as question mark? Well, this constructor requires a non-optional view object, as you can see here. So this is why we need to uh, use the as bang, because this is an optional. Okay, so minor detail, don't worry about it so much. So let me just drag this in here, drag this in there, and drag this in perhaps right here. So I'm going to drag one of these images, perhaps that one, you'll notice that I'm not getting the entire frame anymore because the preview is using the local object, which is the image that we're touching right here. So that's kind of how that works. And that is pretty cool. So what else needs to be fixed is the actual image that we're dragging. Instead of duplicating it everywhere, we need to actually remove this object from the view. So how we do that is also uh, quite simple. If we notice one thing with uh, a method that is also on drag interaction, and that method is this right here. So we'll animate lift with. So this method right here is also part of the drag interaction delegate. And this right here, you can actually just remove the image that you're actually dragging. So this method has this parameter called session on it. So this is all kind of new to me as well. And session has this array uh, of drag items like so. I'm just going to use a for each on this array and hit enter. You'll get this drag item guy. And this session is pretty much going to contain everything that you're attempting to drag around. And when it's kind of complete with the entire drag process, you can just remove this image view if you just type in this right here. So uh, let's see if let drag item. So let's see, let image, let's see touched image view is probably a better name equals drag item dot, let's see, local object. And I'll say as UI view. Let's see if I can actually do that. Let me try to build. I think it's okay. So what is this guy complaining about? I think I need a capital I there and everything should be okay. So touched image view, I'm just going to remove from super view and try to run this now. So what exactly is this doing? Well, let me just show you what the behavior looks like first. So dragging that, dragging this, and dragging perhaps a third image right there. So I'm gonna drag this guy to the top right over there and drag this over like that. So what's actually happening is the question. Well, will animate lift with is actually going to execute the moment that image pops up. So will animate lift kind of does that right there. And the reason why it disappeared is because if you don't move around the mouse, it'll actually cancel out of it. So I'll fix that a little bit later on. All right, so why did that image just kind of disappear? Well, let me just show you what happens when you drag this guy off screen. And basically the animation of dragging was canceled. So we actually have to handle the cancel event as well. So let's go back into our project one more time. And I believe this is the final method that we have to uh, implement. So let's get the will animate cancel with, and this guy also has this drag item object. So all I'm going to do is to add the image back onto the views, uh, view controllers view if the animation is canceled. So I'm just going to say this right here. 
Uh, let's see, item dot local object as UI view. And this might be a little bit too much syntax for some of you guys, but I'm just going to use the as bang right here, self dot view dot add sub view. And the sub view will actually be the item local object. So let's see what happens when I drag images off the screen, which is going to look something like this. Let me drag a third image. So I'm going to drag this off screen and it's just going to pop back to where it used to be. All right, so that's kind of how the UI drag interaction process works. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. If you are interested in downloading the source code for today's project, uh, make sure to find the download link in the description as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye guys.